In a previous khutbah, we spoke about the rights of children in two states in their life cycle. One before they even existed, because it was talking about before the marriage of the father and the mother, and one after birth. And today we're going to talk about a different state in the life cycle. You see, Islam is comprehensive and it encompasses all aspects, all states of the life cycle. And it left nothing neglected. An important state is when that being is still an embryo or a fetus. Still Islam gave it rights. One of the most important rights is preserving the right of the fetus to have an honorable, clear, confirmed lineage. And for this reason, to preserve this right, Islam put regulations to sexual relationships by binding them to legal ones only. And therefore, legislated marriage to be the only channel through which children are produced for the preservation of the right of having an honorable, clear, confirmed lineage. Additionally, Islam put restrictions to these relationships and therefore made zina prohibited any sexual relationship outside wedlock is illegal in islam also to protect and preserve his lineage but mankind is weak and faulty and people commit sins even in this situation, even if a married mother weakens, gives in to shaitan and commits zina and becomes pregnant, then still this right of lineage, confirmed lineage, is preserved. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim, الولد للفراش وللعاهر الحجر. The child, if a woman commits zina whilst married, he said the child is traced back to the owner of the bed, meaning the husband, meaning referring things to the principal state. In principle, this woman is married, and if she becomes pregnant, then. That pregnancy is from her husband. So the Prophet ﷺ is confirming that. He said if she becomes pregnant, then she is to trace it back to the owner of the bed. So the lineage of the boy is still traced back to his father confirming his lineage. al الحجر And the one who committed zina becomes deserving of the stone, meaning she's to be, to be stoned to death as a corporal punishment for a woman or a man who commits zina whilst married. Which leads to the second right of the fetus. Okay, so a woman commits zina whilst married and she becomes pregnant. So we took care of the side of the lineage. Let's talk about the second part of the hadith. Applying physical punishment to her while she is pregnant. What's the fault of the fetus? To suffer as a consequence of the sin of his mother. He doesn't suffer. He is protected. His rights are preserved. In the book of Imam Muslim, a woman from the tribe of Ghamid, 
currently southern part of Saudi Arabia. It's known as the story of al ghamidiyya She committed zina and she was married. She came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I've committed a sin, so purify me. And then she admitted that she's committed zina and she was married. He said, are you pregnant? She said, yes. He said, then go back until you deliver and then come back and I'll apply the punishment to you. She went and after delivery, she came back carrying the baby. He was protected and preserved. And then he said, go back, breastfeed him until you wean him and then bring him back to me. And then, and only then, I will apply the punishment to you. Two years later, she came back and the baby was a young boy carrying a piece of bread in his hand, eating it. At that, the Prophet ﷺ commanded that the corporal punishment uh, to be uh, applied to her. So the right of that fetus was protected. And the consequence of the sin of his mother is not to affect him. Another right is blood money. If an assault happens against his mother while she's pregnant, and he dies in her womb, or is delivered and dies as a result of that, of that assault. It had enough effect on him that after delivery he died. Then he becomes, or his uh, family become entitled to blood money. Just like any adult, just like killing any adult, mistakenly killing any adult, makes the family entitled to receive blood money. In the book of Imam Muslim, it is reported that two women from the tribe of Hudayl had an argument, so one of them picked a rock and threw it at the other woman who was pregnant and killed her and her fetus. At that, people went to the Prophet ﷺ asking for the ruling in this situation and he ﷺ ruled that blood money is to be paid for the fetus as well as the mother. Even if he dies, his rights are preserved. Financial support. One might say, how can you have that? Well, Allah Azza wa Jal, when talking about divorced women, said, spend on them until they deliver what they're pregnant with. So if a woman is pregnant and is divorced irrevocably, meaning the third divorce, she is not entitled to receive any financial support. Yet, financial support is still to be paid as a right of the fetus. Another scenario, if a woman is pregnant and becomes rebellion, leaves the house without the permission of the husband and goes to her parents' house or goes to live alone, whatever, right? In this situation, Islamically, she is not entitled to receive any money, any financial support. But because of the pregnancy, because of the right of that fetus, Throughout the duration of pregnancy, financial support for that fetus is to be paid. Regardless of her being deserving of financial support or not. Because it doesn't matter. This is a right preserved to the fetus she is carrying. Another right. Islam preserves to the fetus is inheritance.
if it is confirmed that a woman is pregnant and then a person dies whom this fetus becomes entitled to inherit like a father for example his father dies after it became confirmed that she's pregnant and there's a fetus and then she delivers him alive then he is entitled he becomes an ear entitled to inherit in the book of the Imam Abu Dawood classified as authentic by Al-Albani the Prophet وسلم, said if the fetus comes out is delivered istahal was explained by the scholars to mean two things came out crying indicating that he's alive or comes out alive both of which indicate to the same issue he has to be delivered alive so if a fetus is delivered if a woman gives birth and that comes out alive then he becomes entitled to inherit بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Another right is the preservation of the life of the fetus and therefore in Islam abortion is prohibited The right of this fetus to remain alive is preserved. Especially after the fourth month, fourth month, when the soul is breathed into that fetus. It is only in very, very extremely limited situations that Islamic jurisprudence permits abortion but the principal ruling is that it is prohibited if a child or a fetus is miscarried after the fourth month elapsed then he has the right to be washed, shrouded, and prayed over, the funeral prayer. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, a miscarried pregnancy, meaning a fetus being miscarried, should be prayed over. And people, meaning in the funeral prayer, should supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive and be merciful with his parents. Finally, protecting the well-being of the fetus by waiving some of the commands for him. If a pregnant woman knows that she is able to fast but it will have an impact on her fetus then she is she has the right not to fast during Ramadan the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Abu Dawood, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal exempted a traveler, a pregnant woman, and a woman who is breastfeeding from having to fast. You see, when, when a pregnant woman becomes hungry for a long period, this can affect the growth 
of the fetus for not receiving sufficient nutrients from the mother through the blood. And to protect him from having any impact due to fasting, like being miscarried or what have you, or his growth become affected due to that fasting, Islam legislated that this pillar is waived from that woman for the interest and the well-being of the fetus. Indeed, Islam is a great religion. We thank Allah Azza wa Jalla who has blessed us to be Muslims and enjoy this faith and live with its mercy that is showered over us from all sides in all aspects of our lives. We only ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make us remain firm and steadfast on this faith until we die and to grant us an end to this life in a manner that pleases Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to admit us to the highest level of Jannah Al-Firdaus Al-A'la Allahumma Ameen Allahumma aghfir lana wa li walidina wa li man lahu haqqun alayna Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawmi